a really pretty plant. It takes after the parent quite a bit. Um, so I'm really pleased about that. It's not nearly as spicy, which is even better. Another way to create your own variety of uh, vegetable is to save hybrid seed. Now, if you're like uh, a lot of gardeners, you're told don't save the seed from hybrids because it's not going to come true. Well, that's uh, pretty much true. It's a true statement. But one of the things that saving hybrid seeds does is it, it is a quick pathway to creating a new variety. And that is because the, the second generation, the hybrid is F1 or first generation. The second generation, the genes disassemble and reassemble in the most diverse way, and creating lots of different variations of the original hybrid or the seed you bought from a seed company or wherever. So uh, that's what I did in this case. This is a mariachi pepper. I planted several of them. Um, and I saved the seed. I didn't save the seed. I saved these two plants because I like their habit. And on the right, um, this is a mariachi pepper if I didn't say that already. On the right, this one looks a lot like the parent, except maybe the fruit when it first starts growing is a lighter pale color. And then, uh, of course, it turns orange and red just like the parent. And over here, I was going to say this one is a version of a pepperoncini because when it first starts growing, it's a light green color and it was more wrinkled. But as they grew fatter and bigger, they kind of plumped up. So it's not doing what I want exactly with this one. So I'm probably not going to save this particular one. Um, you can see some differences in the, in the, in the plants because this one that looks like the, the parent more or less is lighter in color the leaves than the than its sister or brother right next to it its sibling so and, and its growth pattern is a little bigger but both of them are very prolific they put tons of little peppers on everywhere and um, there it's really cool this plant is I'm gonna keep this one now the main reason why I'm keeping this one is because I like the mariachi pepper quite a bit but it was Oh my gosh, it set my mouth on fire. It was pretty warm. So I was like, well, I can't, I didn't want that. So that's one of the reasons why I grew it out. I wanted to uh, find one close to the parent that was not as spicy. And that is exactly what I found here. Now this, the growth habit is very small. Let me get out the tape measure and I'll show you. All right. So we've got a tape measure here. And if you go widest point to widest point, it's about 20 inches wide that way and because it's right next to its sibling it's about eight inches that way which is not very bad at all and the height is even less the height is about 14 inches tall as you can see all right there it's probably 13 yep it's about 13 inches tall so I like that it's very, very compact like that. It's, that's a really good aspect when you're growing in close quarters like this. So the whole point of this is to tell you that, yeah, if your interest is to just grow vegetables and you want consistent, nice vegetables, hybrids offer that to you. But if you want to create your own, another way to do that, doesn't matter what vegetable it is, is to grow out a hybrid, save the seed, and then you plant a bunch of those seeds and you pick and choose as they grow what you like about it. Now an F1 generation is 50% uh, complete. That means that um, it has 50% of its final genes in it. So it can go all over the place. Now this one is an F2, a second generation, the same with its sibling. And every time you half it by 50%. So this is another 25% or 75% towards a finished or open pollinated variety. Every generation you add half. So the F3 generation you would add 12.5. 
and so on and so on until you get to about the seventh or eighth generation and then it becomes open pollinated and all open pollinated means is that every time you save the seed it will come true to the parent just like uh, what they call you may hear people call them heirlooms heirlooms just really are old varieties there's also open pollinated varieties that come true every year and that's what you'll have after about seven to eight generations so I'm excited about this plant here this is a mariachi f2 and um, I think it's F2. Is it F2 or F3? Um, yes, it is an F2. And the same with this sibling. But I don't like the color of the sibling, but I'm not ruling it out yet until I taste it. So uh, I'm going to grab a few peppers off of here. An orange one, a yellow one, and this red one here. And we're going to give it a taste test and see what it's like. So we pulled three peppers off the plant, the far left one is um, no color well it's got color but it's not started turning that's the color it is when it's small maybe even maybe even a little bit paler the middle one is starting to ripe and it's going orange and the far right is ripe so we got yellow orange and red all right part of figuring out you know which plant to carry forward of the um, of the uh, grow out of the F2 seed, which is this is all F2 seed. Part of that is taste testing to see if it's worth it. So I'm going to taste uh, this plant, this pepper, at all three stages. It's primarily three stages. You get the yellow, orange, and red. And uh, sometimes they taste differently, and like as it ripens, it gets fruitier or uh, uh, sweeter. So let's do that taste test, and then I'm going to show you how to save seed. Okay, the yellow is very mildly spiced, you know, like chili relleno or less even. If you follow the Scoville, which is pepper hotness, I'd say it's around 100 to 200, maybe, if that. Let's try the orange. And it, it's got like a, sort of like a bell pepper taste. Maybe not quite as much twang as a bell pepper. Oh wow. Ooh, <clears throat> that one's different. It had a, the orange had a little bit of a zing to it. Um, I won't say fruity, but sort of fruity, and it is spicier. Same plant. More interesting than the yellow and spicier. Now let's go to the red. It definitely transitions from this to this to this in the taste. Somewhat bell pepper like, not as much of the bell pepper like taste. And then it got a little bit, we'll just call it fruity, a little bit spicier. And this has got the same spice as the orange, more or less, but more of, I guess you'd call it the fruity taste. I definitely like this pepper better ripe, completely ripe. Yep, definitely better. 
It's a thick pepper too, the walls. It's a really good pepper. Definitely fruity. Kind of like a spicy cantaloupe that's not quite sweet yet. Not com quite completely. Take away the heat and it's sort of like an almost, not almost ripe, but not green either, but somewhere between green and ripe cantaloupe. can definitely taste like a that is good the, the, this one is really good this one would be good in like a regular cooking that you'd use a bell pepper for and this one well anything else <laughs> but I, I like the red one okay taste test this took a little bit long so I'm gonna put these over here because I'm gonna eat them I'm going to go right into seed saving. Now here's the first pepper to turn. And if you're going to save the seed, obviously you need to save the seed at the optimum time. And for a pepper, the best time to save the seed is when the pepper is completely ripe for whatever kind that is. And we know this one turns red. Most peppers turn red. Some don't turn red. So you need to know what color your pepper is when it's ripe and then as you can see here this one is very firm this one is softening quite a bit so you want to get a pepper that's fully ripe and starting to soften a good bit and may even wrinkle some and then all you have to do basically is cut it open it's real easy to save pepper seeds you gotta do is just basically knock the seed off just like this you don't have to I'm losing a lot of seed but that doesn't matter because there's a lot of seed in here and I didn't set up to do the seed thing for you because peppers are so stinking simple if you remember those rules wait till it gets ripe then wait till it starts to soften some and after that happens just simply scrape them onto a plate or whatever else you want to scrape it onto. I do a paper plate, could be a glass, uh, yeah, ceramic plate or anything else. And then all you do is uh, same thing you do after you ferment seeds. You put them on the plate and you leave it for a couple weeks. And you can do the snap test. That's where you take a seed and you snap it. It snaps, it's done. But basically, uh, within a couple weeks or so, this seed will be completely dry and you can store it. So that's all there is for pepper seeds. That's about it. It's really easy to, to uh, save seeds for peppers. So that pretty much concludes this video. Um, <clears throat> to sum up, what we did was we grew out an F1 that we really like, okay? Now when you do that, you just got to know that when you save the seed, it's not going to be just like the F1, it's not going to be just like the parent, although this one is fairly close. For right now, it seems to be growing even more compact, and the peppers may be a little bit smaller. Uh, we'll know a little bit more after these seeds grow. But then, in, in the second generation, the genetics are going to realign from both parents that you got the F1 seed from. And it's going to be all over the place. The F2 generation, which is this one, is the most diverse. Now, when you save these seeds and you grow these out, these are going to be, you're going to get a lot more chance of getting a plant just like the one I showed you today from the F2 generation, F3. It'll be 75% complete. These seeds are 75% towards an open pollinated version. And then when you, when you grow these out, if you find another plant like this, you'll add 50%. Uh, of the genes will tighten up until you get to the F7, F, F8 generation. When you get that far along, like I'm at the F6 with my squash, once you get to F8, it's a done deal. Every time you save the seeds, it'll come exactly like the parent. So, we're at the, this is the F3 seed. This was 
a mariachi pepper. It's an F1 hybrid. That means two different parents were used to create it. It creates an F1 or first generation uh, plant. And every one of those plants are going to look exactly the same. That's the same. And that's why I see companies sell it that way. Uh, because they know that you can't grow it out and then, uh, and then save the exact same seed. So you have to keep going back to them. But if you buy that F1 seed and you, cr and you save the seed uh, from that F1, and you grow them out, you'll get several different varieties of pepper, like I showed you two, two samples of how these were a little bit different. And then when you save the seed from every generation after that, it becomes 50% more towards whatever you're selecting as you go. So that's it for this video. Another, this is probably the simplest way to create your own vegetable variety. Sprint, you guys. See you later. I wanted to mention one last thing, and that is, if you buy seed from somewhere and it has a PVP plant variety protection, uh, you cannot by law uh, keep any of the seed and, and produce it for yourself or anyone else. That's, it's, uh, they, have a, they paid to have that variety protected. It doesn't happen very often, but sometimes you run into it. Um, you can look it up easy enough online. They've got a plant PVP database and even sometimes in rare circumstances you'll have a plant patent plant patents are obviously a little harder to get but you don't want to try to do any of this kind of stuff with patented or pvp protected uh, vegetables so make sure you understand that before you go to do this sort of thing